was the dryer the tune brought it to life gave men your spirit spark turned them to light from dark by your blood set apart made us to shine give us a breakthrough so much more to do Your kingdom come to us Your will be done in us Give us your heart Give us a breakthrough It's gotta come from you You are unstoppable Everything's possible Almighty God Give us a breakthrough Happy Mother's Day, everyone. It's um, great to be with you this very memorable Mother's Day. This will be one to remember as we have all been in quarantine uh, for six weeks now. So it's going to be a very special Mother's Day. I want to welcome you to our service. We're so glad we can all participate 
uh, virtually together in this uh, church service. Glad you've joined us online, and um, I hope that today is a very special day for you, all your mothers, that you know how much you are appreciated, how much you're needed, how much you're loved. I hope you can do something special for yourself today, and uh, I w let's all join together in prayer and ask for a blessing on today. God, we thank you so very much for all your many, many blessings, but especially today, we thank you for our mothers. Uh, Father, there's just nothing like a mother's love, so unconditional, so strong, so uh, fierce in so many ways, so protective. And um, we know that kind of love comes from you, and you showed us that kind of love that you have for your son. Uh, we are grateful to you for that, for the love that we know with each other uh, because of you. Please bless this service. Please bless everyone that is joining with us today. And uh, I pray that today's a special day for all moms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I just want to share a few calendar items with you this morning. Uh, we're going to continue to keep our bingo closed as well as uh, our building closed until the city and the county and the state open us up. And we're not at that phase yet. And so we're going to continue to keep uh, uh, in compliance with all of the regulations and the social distancing that we've been requested of by our governing authorities. And so we'll let you know as things change. But today we're very excited to uh, celebrate Mother's Day. I hope the moms of the congregation enjoyed their little box of candy. It's just a token of our love for our mothers. And uh, then we're going to celebrate later in the month, graduation Sunday, and that's going to be very, very exciting. And I just want to remind you of our special contribution. We'll start on June 14th and run through the summer. We want to uh, extend it this year because of the financial challenges due to the pandemic. But uh, we really uh, have been uh, uh, so generous in the past, and I hope that we can be this year because uh, our mission uh, efforts are so important. The Baltic Nordic uh, churches need our support as well as Bakersfield. John Oakes called me the other day and he was hoping that we would be able to continue our support. And so uh, we'll be praying about that. We'll be giving and uh, we'll keep you updated as far as that's concerned. And, and then don't forget Father's Day in June. As fathers, uh, we uh, look forward to uh, uh, that day as well. And then uh, Let's look forward as a congregation to our uh, congregational picnic. Whenever uh, the governing authorities allow us to meet together, we'll have a great celebration in the park. I'm so glad you're with us this morning, and especially moms. We love you. We're so grateful that we can honor you today in this way.
Hello again for the uh, communion part of our service this Mother's Day. Um, this was this was fun for me, this communion to plan, because, um, of course, I'm, I'm a mother, and um, so I was kind of writing this for myself, too, as a way of encouragement. But I thought of Mary, thought of talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and looking at a story that will show us the, uh, the humanity of Mary, the humanity of Jesus, her son, and their relationship. And hopefully, um, we can, this will encourage all you moms, um, that uh, theme for the community today is treasures of the heart. In Luke chapter 2, you can turn there or you can just listen. In Luke chapter 2, it actually says two times. In um, Luke verse 19, it says, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then near the end of the chapter, it also says in verse 51, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And um, so that's what I want to look at today, what it means to be a mother. Uh, what are the things that we treasure in our hearts? And um, let's look at that because those are the things that that really are special to us. And if you're a mom, you know what I mean. All of our children's lives, we treasure things in our hearts. We ponder them, things that we know about our children. Um, so let's look in, in Luke 2. We won't read, uh, take the time to read it all, but the uh, Luke chapter 2, the beginning, describes how Joseph and Mary presented Jesus, their baby son, at the temple when he was eight days old, as was the custom. Uh, they were very obedient to the customs. Joseph and Mary were. And uh, there was a prophet there, Simeon. And he talks about in verse 33, 34 through 35, that Simeon, the prophet, saw uh, Joseph and Mary and their baby son. And he came out to the courtyards and saw them. And he took Jesus in his, in his arms and realizing that this is the Son of God that was promised, he took him and he, he, his prophecy was, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now, that's a pretty ominous prophecy, and I'm not sure what Mary and Joseph thought about that. It says that, that they were in awe of that, uh, that they left and they marveled at the things that they'd heard. Uh, after Simeon left or gave the baby Jesus back to Joseph and Mary, another prophetess, prophetess came, Anna, and she said similar things that this baby will be involved in the redemption of Israel or J Jerusalem, excuse me. And so, you know, here are some uh, things that were at verse, it first says that uh, Mary pondered these things and wondered what, you know, what is my child going to grow up? Uh, what, is, what is he going to do? Who will he become? And she pondered these things in her heart. And, uh, you know, after this, it says that they returned to their home, to Nazareth, and they lived for 12 years. And who knows, maybe they even, um, you know, didn't think about those prophecies very much or, or, or worried about it too much. Um, but for 12 years, it says that Jesus grew strong and he was filled with wisdom and, and God's grace was upon him. And we're going to pick up the story in verse 41. Uh, it says that every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he, Jesus, was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem. 
and I want to go back to that previous slide because I want to take a break in the story right here. And um, you can imagine what this was like. Uh, uh, every year, as was the custom, uh, Joseph and Mary and all their friends and relatives, you can just see them all walking together, uh, you know, with their, with their food and their belongings because it took days to get to Jerusalem from Nazareth. And you can see, you know, Jesus is a 12-year-old boy, and he's not sticking right next to his parents the whole time. He's with his friends, he's with his cousins, he's with his relatives. And they make their way to Jerusalem, and um, they celebrate the Feast of the Passover. And then on the way back, you can see that um, how likely it is that they all just have a meeting spot, and then they start walking home together, all the relatives and friends. And um, you can see how it could happen that uh, after a day's journey back towards Nazareth, all of a sudden, Mary turns to Joseph and says, have you seen our son, Jesus? And uh, Joseph may have said something like, uh, no, have you? And, uh, you know, if you are a parent and if you've ever lost your kids, you can immediately start to kind of play that blame game like, I thought you I thought you had him. No, I thought you had. And um, I've definitely been there and done that. Um, you know, losing your kids is a mother's worst nightmare possible. And um, I was thinking of a time when my two daughters were little. Mandy was six and Megan was four. We were living in Colorado and the three of us had just returned from the grocery store. And um, we were, uh, you know, I had the car doors open and I was unloading the bags of groceries going in and out the front door. And I'm um, thinking, you know, the girls are just following me in through the door and, and then, you know, going into the house. And I was just back and forth and in and out. And, but, but right away, I remember um, a friend calling on the phone. And... Um, I remember talking to this friend and having a conversation with her and just my mind was on our conversation. And so maybe five, ten minutes later, I hung up and um, looked around for the girls and couldn't see them. And I thought, are they still out by the car? And so I, I go out to the car. They're not there. So then I start calling for them, you know, and... Um, I didn't see them anywhere in our cul-de-sac, so I'm starting to get nervous. Where are they? So I walk in the house. I look in the living room, the den. I go all the way upstairs to their bedrooms. They are nowhere. And so by then, my heart's pounding, and I'm really starting to panic. So then I, I go back outside, look, look, you know, all through the house on my way back out. I look all through the car. I walk around the cul-de-sac. I'm calling. I'm yelling for them. And so by now, I'm really going crazy, going out of my mind. And um, if, you, if you're a mom and if you've ever lost your kids, you, you know that that is a feeling that is just indescribable, that sense of panic and fear and guilt. And honestly, my memory is kind of, it goes kind of blank at that point because I was just so afraid and so frightened. I really can't remember the details of, uh, of, of, of how long it had been. I just remember going back in the house and getting another phone call. And I was just about to call Greg when, um, I think it had been 10, 15 minutes, I get another phone call from a different friend of mine that lived two or three blocks away. And uh, my friend, Tammy, said, I guess who's at my house? And, you know, the sense of relief and the surge of anger, and um, it was just these conflicting emotions. I was so overwhelmed. So I jump in my car and run over to Tammy's house, and there they were, my two little girls. And, um, you know, like I said, the relief, but yet the anger, because they had frightened me so, so much. And uh, I can really understand, you know, the, what, what were they doing? What was, you know, my little Mandy thinking at six years old? She had tried to follow me into the house, but couldn't get, the, uh, couldn't get that outer glass door open. And so she gave up pretty quickly and just decided, okay, I can't get in the house, so 
I'm going to take my little sister and we're going to go to uh, Tammy's house and make a little visit. So that was her mind set. <laughs> Um, and so back to the story with Jesus. We can understand Mary as a mother. And so it wasn't just a few minutes for her, though. For Mary and Joseph, they had already traveled a day without him. It took them a day to get back. And then it says in verse 46, we'll pick up the story, after three days, they found him in the temple courts. So they've searched for four days for their 12-year-old son. They found him sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And um, again, we can just sympathize with Mary as a mother her, her relief, but yet her anger, and how could you do this to me? How could you scare me so, so badly? Um, and so I, I wanted us to just read this story about Jesus. You know, Jesus, then this was sort of um, a time when he really was understanding his call from his Father in heaven that he had work to do on this earth. And, uh, and his response was... Uh, you know, to his parents were, why? Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? And, um, you know, and then it says he went back to Nazareth, w Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. And so, um, you know, we see Mary as a mother. And we're, again, where I ask the question, what does it mean to be a mother? Um, every mother has dreams that, you know, that their son, their daughter will be a good person and will do wonderful things with their lives. And we all have hopes and we all have fears and we only want the best for our kids. And uh, it's a feeling, it's a relationship like no other where your children's successes are your successes. And um, our children's failures and their hurts are ours as well. We feel them it, very keenly. But each of us have treasures in our hearts. We have memories of our children growing up, whether they're two years old today or 20 years old today or 40 years old today. We know our children. We know their strengths, their weaknesses, the good, the bad, the ugly. But we love them regardless. We love them fiercely with a protectiveness that is God-given. You know, when I finally had the girls back in the house and Greg was home and trying to calm me down. The girls were crying because they sensed that I was so, so upset, so guilty, so relieved, so angry, just all over the place. Greg had to send me to my room so he could handle the girls because I was just out of my mind with, uh, you know, emotion. And he had to talk to the girls about, don't ever do that again. Don't ever leave the house without permission. So, as we take communion today, uh, let's just be thankful for a God that chose to give us examples like this, stories like this that we understand. And uh, it's as if we were there. We can see it happening. And um, we can really completely relate to this. Mary, Mary was a mother just like us, and we understand her emotions. And God sent Jesus, his son, to live among us, to be born here, to grow up, to be a son, to have a father and a mother. And uh, he did fulfill those prophecies of Simeon and Anna. And he did. Jesus does reveal our hearts. Every day, Jesus reveals our hearts. And the Bible is a sword that pierces our soul. And uh, we're, we're grateful for that, for the change of life that we have because of Jesus. And so... Let's say a prayer right now, thanking God for what he's given us in Jesus, and this will be our prayer for communion. God, we thank you so much for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you that we are your sons and daughters, and uh, on this day, we're especially mindful that you sent your son to be a son here on earth to Mary, and uh, thank you so much for the relationship that we see 
the mother-that-son relationship. We see the love. We, uh, we understand it. And we thank you so much that you allowed Jesus to die for us, to die for our sins. Uh, we're grateful. And as we take this uh, juice and uh, communion, I pray that you help us to, uh, even today as Jesus reveals our hearts, help us to... Um, just again, recommit ourselves to you, to loving you, to living life the way you want us to. And uh, thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Really appreciate Kathy's communion, and I remember that day when when the little girls went off on their own, and it was so awesome to have a disciple living a few weeks, few uh, not weeks, but a few blocks away. And uh, Luke and Tammy are still dear, dear friends. They became Christians in our Bible talk, and we were so grateful that day for Tammy. And our girls, I think they learned a lesson, but uh, that was that was a bit frightening. I want to. Uh, uh, just remind us of our contribution and uh, thank the church for their generosity. So far, even with the virus, we've been uh, making our contribution budget, which is fantastic because uh, without our fundraiser income, we've been challenged. But uh, have some good news for the congregation. We were able to uh, get some funds from the government, uh, part of the, the relief, and uh, that's going to help us uh, with our uh, our uh, challenges as far as our finances as this church. But I just want to thank the church so much for your generosity. And I'll be praying for our contribution and then uh, remind you of the, oppor the different opportunities, the different ways that you can give. So let's pray together. God and Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for, most of all, for our salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus. Father, we always want to be in awe of you. We always want to be able to humble ourselves with incredible awe and reverence. And Father, we're so grateful that you sent your son. We're so grateful for his teaching, his life examples that we can imitate. And Father, we're most of all thankful that he defeated the power of death and the power of wickedness and evil. And Father, we claim that righteousness, we claim that goodness today. And Father, we give out of hearts of thanksgiving, hearts of gratitude, hearts of stewardship, knowing that everything we have has been given to us by you. Father, you're our provider. You have all sovereignty, you're all good, and you're fair. And Father, we pray that we would imitate you and that more and more people in the world would come under your reign and Father, claim Jesus as their Lord so our world could be the place that you desire it to be. Father, bless this contribution. Bless us as we give. Bless the congregation. Father, bless them in their finances. Help us to be good stewards. Help us to be disciplined and responsible and wise. Father, so many things that have happened these last few months we never expected. And yet, Father, you will take care of us and help us to be faithful and to persevere. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, church, so much for your generosity. Hi family, Cheryl Langdell here. I wanted to say Happy Mother's Day and mention what motherhood has meant to me. I 
was older when I became a mom. I was a stepmom first. I went from zero to three kids in about a week, and it was challenging. But I begged God that he'd let me experience motherhood from day one. He answered that prayer, and I feel loved despite my flaws. what being a mom means to me. Um, Nicholas is a joy. Being his mother is the greatest blessing. Um, we prayed and, and wanted to be parents for a long time. And um, just being Nicholas's mom is just such a joy, such a blessing. Um, it's a challenge, um, but with that challenge comes just incredible joy. He's so funny. He loves to make people laugh. He loves to dance. He loves to sing. and. I love watching him grow and learn and see how smart he is and how clever he is. It gets him in a little bit of trouble, but um, I love being Nicholas's mom and I uh, feel so blessed um, to have him for Mother's Day. Thanks. Hello. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. This is Bookie. Mother's, motherhood reminds me of God's unconditional love. I've been a mom almost 28 years coming May 17. When I think of motherhood, it reminds me of God's unconditional love for us. God always is always patient, is always kind, always hopes, never gives up on us, always persevere with us. Love never fails. That's what I think of when I think of motherhood. It's been a privilege to be in a mother to be a mother. Happy Mother's Day. I want to share this morning in our sermon about Mother Mary, the mother of God. She was one in a million, and she's an example for our mothers, and she's an inspiration to all of us. She was a woman of faith, of righteousness, of humility, of godliness. And so today, it's only fitting on Mother's Day for us to be able to lift up Mary and look at her spiritual life, her spiritual example, her motherhood, and all the lessons that we can learn from her. I want to share with this small thought 
Though the world is filled with wonderful mothers, there are none that is so uniquely given, so utterly love, so devotedly prayer like you. That is why you're the one in a million. That's how I feel about my mom. Sue Jane Corona Moretzky. She's uh, been in lockdown in her assisted living facility for three months now. She's not allowed to go out of her room. She's not allowed even to leave the facility for fear that because of her age being 89 and because of her health condition, her previous uh, different ailments, they're fearful that she would be exposed to coronavirus. So she's had to be alone. And so that's the sort of course of a lot of mothers right now, especially elderly mothers. And so our prayers and our hearts go out to them. And I'm thinking of my mom today. I'm sure we're all thinking of our, our mothers, whether we're with them or we're not. But we're grateful that we can t take this time, set it aside in our calendars, and remember our mothers. And we want to especially today look at uh, Mary. She was a very faithful mother, and it teaches us about God as well as about motherhood. God is faithful to those that are pure in heart. Mary was chosen because she was pure in heart. It says, his mercy extends to those who fear him. This is a part of Mary's song. We're going to look at Mary's song this morning because uh, that was the heart of her as a mother when she found out that she was going to uh, uh, be the mother of Jesus. She also sang that God is faithful to the poor. And that's very important because many of us uh, are facing financial challenges and hardships and we need the encouragement. It's, they it says that she, the Lord lifts up the humble and fills the hungry with good things. And God is also faithful to his promises. We need to claim that during challenging times through change and transition that God is faithful, that he's a rock, that he's an anchor for our souls and that we can always look to him as working all things together for our good says he's helpful to his servant Israel, merciful to Abraham and his descendants. We're Abraham's descendants as well because we believe in Jesus as our Lord. Let's get into the story in Luke chapter 1 beginning of verse 26. It says, in the sixth month God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. You who are blessed. You who are chosen. You who are destined. The Lord is with you. God has a destiny for each of our lives. As he had one for Mary, he has one for you. He has one for me. God has a plan. If we will get on the path that he wants to lead us through in our journey of life, we will be blessed and favored as well. And we'll be able to sing as Mary sang. And this is a new mother's song. This, this, this came from her heart after finding out that she would be a mother. And so let's look at it in its entirety here in Luke chapter 1. It says, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. And from generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. But he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. But he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. So, first off, Mary glorifies God. Each day, if we can rise and bring glory to God, praise God for our lives, praise God for our day, praise God for the adventure of the day, and choose to be faithful throughout that day, we're going to start off well. She says, I'm the Lord's servant. Mary answered the angel, may it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. God has an angel for each one of us. 
a guardian angel. Mine's a great one. He's had to guard me from a lot. You probably think the same thing about your life. That your angel has to work overtime taking care of you. But God has angels in heaven for each one of us to help us. And Mary glorified God. It says in verse 46 and 47, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. That's why you're worshiping today because you want to honor God with your life. That's why you contributed because you want to honor God with your possessions and wealth. You honor God with your time. You honor God in so many ways. Our church truly is made up of disciples, followers of Jesus, seeking to imitate Jesus. And I want to commend you, church. It's not easy to live Christian in this world. It gets harder and harder each year because there's so much anti-Christian and anti-faith and so much secularism and so much unbelief, so much mocking of faithful, righteous people. And so we glorify God. We're thankful to be Christian. And she goes on in verse 48 and 49, and, and, and she reminds us to stay humble because that's who God blesses, the humble. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, Mary says, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Thank God for every good thing in your life. Don't blame him for the bad things because that's not where bad things come from. The evil one brings the bad in our life, but God brings all the good. God also gives mercy to the humble. I don't know about you, but I need a lot of mercy. I need forgiveness. I need grace. Grace is what motivates me. I can go for a time out of duty, out of responsibility, and yet what really lifts me up, what gets me up in the morning, what causes me to stay up late, what causes me and moves me to be as excellent and my very best is the grace and mercy of God, the love of God. She says in verse 50, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. That's us. God forgave Mary and he forgives us as we're humble, if we, as we fear him. Those people that develop a hard heart and a seared conscience don't fear God. I fear God. I think we've regained our sense of fear with this pandemic. An invisible thing no one can see that we don't truly have a handle on has devastated our whole world. Has shown us there are things that we need to be afraid of. So let's fear what we need to fear. Let's humble ourselves before God so he can extend us his love and his mercy. And God gives victory to the humble. Amen to that. And I'm sure you're amening on your couch this morning. I mean, you're probably even uh, raising the roof with amens. It says in verse 51, He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he's lifted up the humble. The rulers that need to be humbled will be humbled. Those that need to be lifted up will be lifted up. May you and I be of those that are lifted by God, lifted above the extreme negative circumstances of life. We don't even want to get near the bad things in life. We want to be protected and blessed and victorious in the Lord. Amen. And then in Luke 1 verse 53, it says, God provides for the hungry. I really am thrilled how people are extending themselves to not just take care of themselves and their own families, but those that are less fortunate and those that are needy. You know, our congregation of churches in the first few days when the call went out to not let any disciple in the world go hungry, no Christian in our fellowship go hungry, $600,000 was given in a few days by the churches and by members to Hope Worldwide to be distributed. As of the day after, almost 200000 of it was given away. I'm sure by now 
most of it is. And then they will continue to raise funds through Hope Worldwide so that no disciple ever has to go to bed hungry. I'm so grateful for our commitment to one another as a worldwide fellowship, a brotherhood of churches, because God feeds the hungry and, and we need to be doing the same. It says he filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away hungry. He goes on. And he says in verse 54 of chapter 1, he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to his father. God is faithful to his promises and he's faithful to us. His promises will come true. We just need the faith and we need the heart to claim those promises. And as we do, we'll see what a good, loving, steadfast God we have. God was faithful to Mary. He'll be faithful to every mother. He'll be faithful to every father. Every Christian that's faithful to him, faithful to. Mary taught so many important things. She was a parent and uh, she uh, taught Jesus the things that he needed to, to know from her perspective to share with us. And he taught her to love God. And she, he already did. He had been with the Father for eternity. But in a human way, Mary showed Jesus some things by her love for the Father and the way that she glorified and worshipped God that Jesus could imitate. She also trained him to be humble. He was submissive to God the Father, but he was also submissive to his mom. Mindful of the humble, and he lifts up the humble. He also, she also taught him that we are transformed by mercy and that to trust God. These are four things, Mom, that we really need you to teach us as children. To love God, to be humble, to extend mercy, and to trust our Father in Heaven. A mother can do that. So Mary's song teaches us a few very important things this morning on Mother's Day. Her song teaches us that God blesses the humble. I know I say it a lot, mainly because I have to remind myself to be humble. It's hard to be humble. And yet we need to always choose that path. God gives mercy to the humble. He gives victory to the humble. He opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And God provides for those that are hungry and in need. And most of all this day, I want to remind us that God is faithful to his promises. Continue to pray his promises, claim his promises. Let's lift up the banner of Jesus. Let's lift up our voices in worship to God and be so thankful and grateful for his promises. And then let's watch them come true in our lives. This uh, pandemic has slowed us down, in some ways even stopped us, so that we will think spiritually, think deeply. And so today, I want to encourage you, claim the promises of your faithful God. Amen. God made motherhood. And so today, as in every day, I say, let's honor our mothers. Let's show them the gratitude and appreciation that they deserve for giving us life and taking care of us, especially when we were children. Amen, church. God bless you and God bless you, mothers. Amen.